you're in for a treat. Last night, sealed away in a musty corridor, a select committee of whiz kids, whippersnappers, and whiskey drinkers <laughs> yearned and toiled. They burned the midnight oil to compose the best segment in all of sports television. Like every Wednesday, it's my honor and it's a privilege. It's time for Nick's Tears. Indeed it is, one of the last editions of the tears of this NFL season. And as you will see at the top of the tiers, there's a little vindication for the committee. Oh. However, really? we must start with teams that are no longer playing. Full rebuild. These 11 teams are in a full rebuild mode. Two of them just won recent Super Bowls. They are now the cupboard is bare. The three above them are in a full rebuild despite allegedly having their franchise quarterback, and they may not even know they're in a full rebuild, but you are. Hmm. The teams at the very top are in a full rebuild, but they're actually excited about it. Three of the top four picks of the draft, tons of cap space, coach openings, all of that. All right, next group, QB Purgatory, hey. and then Frisky. These six teams right now are all being held hostage to one degree or another by the quarterback position. In Green Bay, is he in or is he out? In Minnesota, it's like, all right, Kirk Cousins, and same with Tennessee. It's Ryan Tannehill is too good to get rid of, but we know we can't win. Washington, who knows what they're doing, and the Steelers and the Patriots, who are really good franchises with great coaches, but, <coughs> pardon me, quarterbacks who just are not going to be able to get the job done. Bad take there. Bad yeah, throat. bad take caught my throat. Frisky, <laughs> these five teams didn't make the playoffs, but all of them should be super excited for next season, and with the right tweaks with the Jets and Raiders situation with the right quarterback additions, they could be teams that could do real damage next season. Now, to the actual tiers. Should be playing. They were eliminated. These two teams were eliminated last week, but they have to feel like they should still be playing. For the Ravens, even without Lamar, if not for the 98-yard 14-point swing all win, Tyler Huntley tried to go full Trevor Lawrence. And for the Chargers, Europe 27-0 against a team many people picked to finish last in their own division. Feel like they should be playing. I feel like maybe at least one of them should be playing, but they're not. Next, two great coaches, one great quarterback. Both Dable and Peterson have done brilliant jobs thus far this season. Both of their seasons likely end this this weekend, but both of them should both these fan bases should feel great about the direction of their teams because of their coaches and in Jacksonville, of course, also because of the quarterback. Overhyped and underhyped. So the Buffalo Bills all year long have been a historically overhyped team that at every turn since September has not lived up to it. They ended the season with some games just like, huh? What happened there? This playoff game, they would have lost to Skylar Thompson if Mike McDaniel, who I like, understood the play. God, it's only 40 seconds, not 65 seconds, buddy. The Cowboys, on the other hand, I think a little underhyped. The Cowboys, Correct. who had a Dak Prescott injury, who dealt with that for five weeks, who were in a, supposedly the best division in all of football, still found their way to 12 wins, still found their way to having different points of the season where they had either a top three offense or a top three defense, yet no one believes in them. Perfect bracket. I'd been saying for quite some time I thought the Eagles would be one and done in the postseason, but that all changed when the Giants beat the Vikings and then also the Cowboys beat the Bucks. If the Eagles could could not have scripted a better opening weekend on the NFC side, aside from, of course, San Francisco losing, which was never going to happen. The Eagles now get a divisional opponent who, as Brew mentioned earlier, they annihilated earlier this season in their first playoff game. And then in their second playoff game, in they will be in Philadelphia either against Brock Purdy or against a team they are very familiar with. They feel great about how the, about how the bracket has fallen. Next, hot shooter. Not like a hot shooter in basketball, a hot shooter like in craps, where it's all luck, but you got to keep going with it. The Bengals' turnover luck at like some that. point will turn. They hope it is not this week against Buffalo, and Buff even if it does turn, Buffalo will probably turn it right back with Josh Allen to him. The Bengals, and if it does turn, luckily for them, they have, in my humble opinion, the best quarterback wide receiver combo in all of the football with Burrow and Chase, and they have pedigree of being able to go on the road and win tough playoff games. Devastating versatility. You put Christian McCaffrey, Kyle Juszczyk, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, and Debo Samuel on the field. You can have two tight ends if you want. You can have two running backs. You can go five wide. You can wait and see what personnel the defense puts out there, 
and you can put, oh, you're going to put your corners out there to guard them as receivers. We're going to run it right down. You, oh, you're going to put big people out there. We're going to spread you out. And then if none of that works, you have the best defense in all of football. Mm. That's devastating versatility. And then finally, the top of the tiers, as they were at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the year, please unveil it. The committee told you so. We warned you. And you scoffed and you said the committee, the chairman emeritus of the committee, was being biased. And then wouldn't you know it? They are the Vegas Super Bowl favorites. They finished with the league's MVP. They finished with the league's best record. They finished with maybe a top three candidate for defensive player of the year, offensive player of the year in Travis Kelsey, the league's MVP, and the playoffs once again go through Arrowhead. And by the way, they're the healthiest they've been all year. Seems like an overwhelming favorite. So there it is. Chris Broussard. Solid. The committee's Solid? top two oh, like to start the it. season is the top two as we approach the end of the season. Shame on you, Nick Wright. For what? Shame on <laughs> What? The, they're, the Chiefs, look, I'm not going to sit here and act like they don't have a great shot. Chiefs, Bills, Bengals are all right there. So we'll see who wins the, this battle royal between those three. Mm-hmm. But the Chiefs, they should not be on the top of the tiers. Here's why. Number one, They aren't even the hottest team in the league, okay? They got a little five-game win streak with one playoff opponent. All right, and you talked about, oh, the the, uh, Bengals or or who it was, the Bills, some baffling games at the end of the season. Well, they have the same record as the Chiefs, 14-3, and and the Chiefs struggled with Denver and struggled with Houston. So let's not act like they were just running through everybody. All right. Cincinnati's got a nine-game win streak against Buffalo, eight-game win streak, San Francisco, 11-game win streak, and all three of those teams have beaten multiple playoff teams in their win streak. Secondly, they aren't the most balanced team. Mm. Their defense gave up 33 touchdown passes this year. Mm -hmm. That's the most in the league. So, obviously, Mahomes is fantastic, but the defense, a bit leaky. And third... The head-to-head does head, – I get it. It's not the standings, but apparently it's not head-to-head either. Because well, yeah. Buffalo beat Kansas City. Cincinnati beat Kansas so where, City I'm just curious. Head. Before I go, and, where would you – who would you have at the top? Not Kansas City. Who would it be? That's my point. And you, you can put San Francisco up there if you but want. But I thought head-to-head but, head mattered. Yeah, so put Buffalo and Cincinnati ahead of Kansas City. Okay, okay but I'm, so, right. I'm just very confused because, so, that, because you said San Francisco. My, my point is this, Sorry. though. Kansas City should not be number one. And Wilds, what did Buffalo do when they went to Kansas City? I can't, you know. They what? slept in their bed. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. They about. raided the refrigerator <laughs> and they brush. used their toothbrush. Oh, yeah. So this head to head matters. Okay, head to head matters. So, matter. so put Buffalo and Cincinnati ahead of San Francisco. You just can't have. Okay, Kansas so you City would have Kansas one. City fourth on on your team, That's which fun. is why you don't have them. Uh, Kansas City. <laughs> the reason San Francisco doesn't have a 12 game winning streak has an 11 game winning streak is because Kansas City went there and beat them by. Three touchdowns. Okay, that's and as good. far as beating so opponents, head head no team in the league this year had more victories over playoff teams than, let me check real quick, oh yeah, the Kansas City Chiefs. They also have the best record and the best player in home field. So it seems like they should be the Vegas favorites. Let me check. They are, so they're top of the tiers. Stink, go right ahead. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to go to Philadelphia because I just think they're, oh, wow. I, think, I think they are way too low. So what is, what is when you talk about team? And you talk about championship caliber team. What do you have to have? Just just a great quarterback? No. You know. No, you, you got to have a great team, right? You got to yeah. have a great defense, a great all. Let's look at the great defense. Let's look at the defensive statistics. Let's okay. look at sack numbers because everybody wants to go after how many sacks you get. Who led the league Pretty good. in pressures on the quarterback and sacks this season? Mm. Oh, there they are right there, the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, what's the standard for great offense? What? Hey, can you find yourself – 400 yards. I just talked to Tom Brady about it. He goes, can you find 400 yards? Because that's what you have to have. Yeah, Who like, had the most 400-yard games there. in football? The Offensive. Yeah. Out of the Eagles. And, and yet, they're where are they on the fourth? They're uh, the, fourth. The fourth on the perfect mm-hmm. bracket. Fourth? Yeah. Should they not be higher than fourth? They're they clearly the best record, the best. I mean, look, go on and on and on it goes. And they lost a couple of games late. Yeah, because they didn't have their starting clear. quarterback. But can I ask you a question? Yeah, please ask it. Are ask you what? convinced they're going to have? No, but that's not the point. <laughs> no, my point is not, my yeah. Ryan, 
convinced they're not. No, you're not convinced not they're going to have the same start. That, that level. I mean, Jalen Hurts will be there, but you seem a little anxious that he's not going to be the Jalen Hurts from uh, a month I, ago. Uh, trust me, I am a little anxious about okay. that. I am a little I anxious. I got to tell you, Wild. Like this is not. You guys have underperformed. <laughs> <laughs> it's playoff time. <laughs> it's playoff tier. Well, I Wild. thought I had to. No, do you that. fell into a bear trap of yeah. like head to head matters. But the 49ers, I was like, oh my gosh. I was trying to edit it out on the fly. I was like, let's go. And you were picking the Giants over the Eagles like earlier in the show. No, I didn't pick the Giants. I said on the verge. No. Wild. You were on the verge. Wild. My Same. goodness. Same. All right. Gosh darn it. I think the Cowboys are being disrespected. Oh. Here's why. First of all, Micah Parsons back. Line against the Bucks. One sack, two tackles for a loss, two passes smacked down, ten pressures on Tom Brady, three press conferences with gave us some good content. He he said he was gonna do something, he did it. Shout out to Micah Parsons. Reason number two, Dak's back. Oh, Dak's throwing interceptions. Okay, I guess so. Well, he didn't. And when he was throwing interceptions, he was five and two in those seven games. Here's his numbers. Can you reveal them? Here they come. Completion percentage, fantastic. Total yards, we added up as rushing yards. He had seven rushing attempts, the most all year. So maybe he's doing a little more I running. Like that. Total touchdowns, five, fantastic. Zero it's turnovers. It's a perfect game. Yeah, perfect game. Yeah. I wanted to bring him up. Guess who else is back? Mike McCarthy. Oh, Mike McCarthy. He's got Sean Payton breathing down his neck. Nope, he's back. And guess what? Broke out a little Kirk Cousins style <laughs> chain celebrating. He said, I think he was. Doing uh, yeah, the, he, he was in between doing the grip <laughs> and some other dance. I forgot what it was. Not great dancing, yeah, but I think that's okay, the next sign week. of a guy with job security. Right. Next week, can they may, go into may San throw Francisco? It three yards on fourth and eight. <laughs> uh, can they go into San Francisco and win? I'm not sure. Also, I don't care because the tears are snapshot. Snapshot in time. In time. Yeah, you don't have to. You know what? Because you're because I had San Francisco before the year before the playoffs, and right now going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, so Kevin Wilds. Unlike your compatriots, you make a compelling, no. great argument. No. No. And you know what? I don't know if we can show the tears again. Let's go ahead and bump the Cowboys you. up. You know they, I, didn't, I, I was hesitant to put you the Cowboys the by themselves so wait, 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 but, uh, uh, aside from I, the Bills because I was like, oh, Nick hates the Bills. But the committee well, was thinking something similar. So you know what? We're just going to put overhyped Boom. as its own thing, underhyped as its own thing. So the Cowboys are right there beneath Let's the go. Eagles above Buffalo. Kevin Wilds, great you. work. You know, I'm glad you said that That's the total recency bias. No. You have one game. Thank you. And, and I've got a full season where they're the best – at the two snapshot time. Also, the Tom Brady thing, yeah. we saw that. Yeah, you, you know, picked you that name up just for that. Touch. You got to pick oh, that I was up. just talking to Tom Brady, and he told me, oh, that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Brady.